Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Breathe, Run, Breathe expert interview series. I am Lisa Ingalls, mind, body, health, and well-being expert, fitness mindset mastery coach. I'm also the creator of the Breathe, Run, Breathe running program where I teach runners and fitness enthusiasts how to use what I call ancient breathing secrets to turn their daily run into an effortless, revitalizing, and mindful practice. And in my 20 years of working with runners and triathletes, I realized that, that the least understood and the most overlooked aspect of achieving peak levels of health and fitness as a runner and as a triathlete, as a multi-sport athlete, is how you breathe. So unfortunately, there really hasn't been much in the way of education and training for this. And the fact is that nearly all the runners and triathletes that I've ever coached have been completely unaware that breathing incorrectly while doing their favorite activity, whether it's running or cycling or any type of aerobic activity, could be causing an entire cascade of events in their body that often leads to things like chronic pain and injury, the inability to recover, and lack of energy and vitality, and even uh, plateaus in performance. So the Breathe, Run, Breathe program is really about re-educating runners how to harness and unlock the power of the breath and to take the work out of their workouts and tap into peak states at will. Now as part of the Breathe, Run, Breathe program, I bring in guest experts. And in this interview, I'm bringing in someone who I had the pleasure of meeting this past fall. Uh, 2013 at a conference that we were both presenting at and when I heard him speak I knew that I needed to have him in this program as one of my guest experts and his name is Dr. Steve Capobianco. He's the medical director of Rock Tape. He's also a certified sports chiropractic physician and exercise rehabilitation specialist who has co-developed something called fascial movement taping which he'll be talking to us a lot more about as uh, we move on with this interview today. Steve has a huge long list of credentials that I'm not going to list out, but what you need to know is that he has spent many, many years working with athletes of all levels, from just fitness enthusiasts and total newbies to the professional le levels, and he himself is also an avid um, athlete spending over 25 years competing in ice hockey, lacrosse, triathlon, adventure racing, natural bodybuilding, oh my gosh, a whole bunch of stuff. So today I'm going to be talking to Steve about how we can use rock tape to enhance our breathing and our performance as runners. So Steve, welcome to the Breathe, Run, Breathe expert interview series. Well, thank you, Lisa. That was a great intro. Um, I love doing these things just for the introductions. Yeah, <laughs> totally. So um, I know we don't have a ton of time today, and I want to dive in, but I think it's important to know, how did you get involved in taping? How, what, what's your story behind how you learned about taping in the first that place? Story, that story is pretty long, Lisa, but I'll, I'll start <laughs> with... Um, how I got involved with taping. Taping is is something that we've been taught within our education. I was taught structural rigid taping in my undergrad, learning how to tape ankles and tape shoulders and tape knees with uh, cotton athletic tape, leuco tape, and the like. But um, when it came to elastic therapeutic tape or um, kinesiology tape, I didn't get that understanding until I was well into my chiropractic uh, degree program. And um, what I found was that it was a, a more functional form of tape that allowed for greater range of motion, and it tapped into another form of, of awareness for body awareness that I couldn't get from rigid taping. So I initially started my education with kinesiology tape with um, the grandfather of kinesiology tape, Dr. Kenzo Kase, with kinesio tape uh, back in 2000, I think it was. And um, he's the, I guess, the, the developer of the concept of kinesiology tape, developed uh, in Japan and brought it to the U.S. about 30 years ago. There, I, was, I was on mute for a second. That's okay. <laughs> awesome. So what is kinesiology tape? Because there's, there's several different brands out there, rock tape being one of them, but I think 
first and foremost, what is kinesiology tape? What does it actually do for right. the body? And you have you have a way of describing it taping for movement, right? Not right. Is that how you? Yeah. Right. So uh, the tagline that we use, and it's something that I believe in, is that uh, I focus on improving somebody's movement efficiency, and that's patients that I see, athletes that I that I work with. Everyone wants to move or needs to move more efficiently, and I use tape to help facilitate that. So let me kind of give you a better explanation because it is a good question to ask: What is kinesiology tape? And I'm just going to cut a piece off of a standard uh, two-inch roll. And what this tape is, if you can see it from the screen that I have, it's a cotton and nylon uh, thread woven together, laid down on, on a paper backing. So if I tear this paper backing away, it exposes an adhesive that allows it to stick to your skin. The tape, in this respect, because of the nylon, allows it to stretch in one direction and does not stretch in the other direction. So it's rigid. In the, in the horizontal, but flexible in the vertical. So mm -hmm. when applied to your skin, and I'm going to apply it to this nice furry arm of mine, I'm going to lay it down on the skin in a stretched position, and the tape will just lay flat on the skin, as shown right there, and it allows me full range of motion, but, but stimulates the skin through what we call mechanoreceptors. The skin is the largest organ in our body, and it's laced by millions of mechanoreceptors that give us perception of where we are in space. Um, and we tap into that system that communicates with the brain through this elastic tape. And so that's ultimately what this tape is. It's a form of stimulus that allows us to, or gives us a better awareness of where we are in space. And this is where I know we'll get into that conversation of how this tape can really facilitate a runner in several different facets of their, of their gait. Yeah, and I think one of the things that was so interesting to me when I heard you speak about this idea, I didn't really understand what kinesiology tape was and how it worked because, like you, when I went to college, I had my athletic training class and learned how to do the rigid taping. So for me, my concept of taping was all about, um, what do you call it, um, just holding a joint in place or like keeping something stiff. What's the? What am I yeah, trying just, to say? It's either you know limiting range of motion, restricting range of motion, structurally holding something together. Those, those are the concepts that we learn through rigid strapping. Right. Okay. So rigid strapping. Mm -hmm. See, I'm a little bit out of my element here talking to you. But so here's the thing that I thought was really interesting. We know that runners and um, endurance sport athletes are often they're not firing. Their muscles aren't aren't always firing, especially in the posterior chain. And when I say posterior chain, um, I don't. I want to bring it back to um, just terms that everybody will understand, which is, you know, your glutes, your hamstrings, but especially the glutes are often not firing the way that they need to be firing, which is how we end up with injuries. And what I was really fascinated about is you're talking, correct me if I'm wrong, that as you start to use this type of tape, it can stimulate some re some movement or some motor how would you explain that cuz i'm not the, explaining it correctly well, well if i can if i if i understand you well this posterior chain let's take that concept of um, the posterior chain as an example the glute the hamstring the gastroc the calf right and if you're going through your gait cycle um, and you're in your end range of your flight stage you're about to make foot strike so you're into that stride length and your posterior chain is being lengthened. So just like an elastic band, just before you make foot strike, you have a nice taut elastic band that you're going to use as energy to be, able, to be able to propel to your next step. If we can tape the posterior chain, say the hamstrings as an example, let me pull this tape out again. We tape that posterior chain and the tape stretches. Let's show you with the paper backing here. I stretch the tape and I apply it to your skin. When I let this paper backing go, you'll see how it recoils. See how it mm -hmm. pulls back? It yeah. acts like an elastic band, just like your muscles do. Um, so if we can apply it to that posterior chain, it can help facilitate the normal mechanics of what we should be using is this elastic system, not using muscles to contract to push us to the next step. 
So mm -hmm. it really acts as a as a facilitation tool, as a as a way of stimulating the nervous system to act more elastically, and that's why I like this tape more than rigid strapping for that for that matter. Right. So that's what I was. That was the terminology I was looking for. It it stimulates the nervous system mm -hmm. to act, did you say act more elastically? Yeah, act more elastically, more reactively. So when you mm -hmm. make foot strikes, say we take an example of foot strike, we absorb all this energy from the foot strike and the ground reaction forces need to be absorbed through something and that's absorbed through the muscular or fascial system along this posterior chain as an example and if we can facilitate that elastic quality of movement through a simple piece of elastic tape then we can help facilitate a better gait pattern or a better function. Mm -hmm. That's awesome and then when I was watching you on stage and presenting the thing that came to my mind was oh my gosh if we can tape our body for movement and gait training and and stuff like that you were also talking about posture and it immediately clicked in my mind well optimum breathing is completely affected by optimal posture so maybe this is a good like segue into taping for optimal breathing which obviously then ends up being optimal performance yeah, I, this is where I think we're so aligned. When we started talking about the diaphragm, talking about normal breathing patterns, and I think you heard me talking about taping for posture. So applying tape on specific areas of the body to, to give the brain better awareness of where it is in space. A lot of times we lose touch uh, in respect of where our shoulders are, where our head is in respect to our shoulders, where our pelvis is. And if we can tap into the skin, which communicates with the brain, to help facilitate a better position, to optimize a better diaphragmatic excursion, a better ability for the diaphragm to, to, to work, then we can improve our breathing capacity. So that's one of the big ones that we do teach in respect to the running community is how do we position the rib cage over top of the pelvis to optimize the ability for the diaphragm to move and simply by applying tape in specific areas of the of the trunk for example you can accomplish that. So do you look at someone posturally we're all different posturally yeah. um, runners and cyclists and <clears throat> triathletes in general tend to have certain typical postures but can you describe a couple of the postures and maybe some do you have some like visuals mm -hmm. at all of um, that you might be able to show us of yeah. taping for posture type of thing great idea that's probably the best way to do it so let me just pull this screen up and see if we can accomplish this to show you visually and I'm gonna pull this down And you'll see that uh, as I'm scrolling through, there's a lot of different taping applications because, like you said, it depends on the individual that's in front of you. So if you see someone that has a specific type of posture, it's it's going to be taped differently than than someone else. Um, mm -hmm. So can you see this image that I have here currently? Yes, abdominal so, breathing pattern. Yep. Right. So classically, yeah, as you already know, the majority of people that, as we if we assess their breathing um, patterns, they breathe apically or breathe through their chest. Um, and this is an abnormal breathing pattern that is dysfunctional, it's suboptimal, and we can't oxygenate as well with this type of breathing pattern. We don't take advantage of, uh, um, of the lower part of our, of our lungs. So if we can help to optimize the ability of the diaphragm, this is shown in the red here, if we can help to pull that diaphragm down horizontally, or excuse me, vertically, we can optimize our ability to breathe. But if we breathe, in this type of posture. Can you see these two images that I have pulled up here? Oh, sorry, I was on mute. Yes, they yes. look great. Okay, so the, the two that I want to really show out here is the one that I, that's showing where the rib cage is pulled up and the pelvis is pulled down. This is a very typical postural dysfunctional pattern that you'll notice is a up mm. flare of the rib cage and an anterior pelvic tilt of the pelvis. And what this does is what they call the open scissors phenomenon where the front is open and the back is closed and this is, does not allow for the diaphragm to properly function. 
So if we can position the body onto more of the uh, the right image where the rib cage is tucked under and the pelvis is in a more neutral position, we can optimize this pumping system where the diaphragm can act the way that it's, in, it's intended to. So if I can simply tape somebody, and I'm going to see if I can pull one down a little bit further, this image here shows a simple application that you can do that will tape along the rib cage that that wraps around in a helical fashion that taps into the pelvis. So these, these this strip of tape um, can facilitate both Is that rib cage. One strip of tape. That's one strip of tape. Yeah. So it oh. starts from the starts from the middle, right at the um, xiphoid process or the lower part of the rib cage, and it actually extends all the way to the pelvis on the back. So the and two is, images is you'll see are... Is that over his shorts, and is that how you would want to do it, or do you want it all attached to your skin? Great, great point, Lisa. No, I, I, that's just <laughs> more for demonstration pro uh, purposes. Um, that would be on the skin. So you want to tap right into the skin when you're using kinesiology tape, and this is going to be extending into the upper portion of the pelvis, not necessarily into the glutes. Okay, okay, cool. So this is, I want to be clear that people understand who have never used rock tape or any type of kinesiology tape, that this is something that you apply and then you leave it on for days at a time, up to days at a time, correct? That's right. So the, the tape is, like I said, cotton and nylon with an acrylic-based glue. So I'm glad we brought that that up. Is that um, it's very hypoallergenic. So that it's it's tolerated by the majority of skin that you'll be um, applying it to, and um, it's applied and left on for the average of three to five days. Uh, you can swim with it. You can shower with it. Um, there are certain care tips that you might want to understand to get it to last for three to five days, but typically uh, the tape will last three to five days. So when someone is taping themselves like this, two questions. Uh, can you tape yourself or do you need someone else to tape you like that? And then the other thing is, before I forget, mm -hmm. what do people typically experience once they're taped? Do they feel different or is do they notice any difference? What will they experience? The experience is different than what most of us that have been taped before um, due to the fact that it's elastic. And so it, it will feel that it's creating a, a slight shear to your skin, but it, like I said, it doesn't restrict your range of motion. So it won't block a range of motion. It won't restrict um, your ability to, to move, but it will give you heightened awareness of that area of the body that's being taped. And that's ultimately what we're trying to establish here is, is give the brain heightened information or greater information to, to, to allow it to do what it does best, which is get you to move more efficiently. So if we apply it in the right area, we can optimize our ability to move more efficiently just through the brain's function. That's, I, I think that's completely amazing. And is that something that you can tape like that yourself, or do you generally need someone to help you to tape? Good question. I would typically start with someone that's been trained. We have a, a group uh, of trained professionals that we call Rock Tape Docs, which I am one of them and an instructor for. We've trained probably over eight to 10,000 trainers or uh, Rock Tape Docs around the world in the last four or five years since the company's inception. But um, I would typically start with a trained practitioner or professional that can assess your movement, assess your posture and your movement to decipher where the tape would be best applied and have them apply it to you first. That being said, uh, when it comes to kinesiology tape, we, we really take the simplistic uh, standpoint in respect to taping, meaning that it's really not rocket science. So once you understand where to put it, you can teach a family member, a friend, a coach, uh, a teammate, a uh, uh, to how to apply it to you if you can't access it on yourself. But most lower the lower extremity applications you can do on your own. And there are videos online that you can follow along with. Uh, rocktape.com is is uh, one of the best resources that you can use to, to be able to learn how to self-tape for specific conditions. OK, awesome. And so then my other question on this would be, 
once you start taping, do you always have to continue taping, or does the tape start to you? You talk about this, the brain function and and this communication between the skin and the brain, and at some point, does the body begin to, for lack of a better way of putting this, remember how to move because it's now been stimulated long enough to 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 move a certain way, or or how do you how would you describe that? No, that's a great it's a great question, and it, it it depends. That the answer that I usually use in these respects is is it it does depend. Uh, on the individual that you're taping. Let me give you an example. Uh, I work with a bunch of Olympic cyclists and I taped them for say a musculoskeletal condition initially and they got some benefit and then they started to recognize that their performance was in, in, enhanced with the tape on and to convince somebody like that and take any of our athletes, I think you would agree, that if they can find an edge that's legal, um, that gives them a performance edge, uh, they're going to use it, and so it's it's really an understanding, a communication between the coach or the practitioner and the athlete to say this this is a tool that we use to help optimize your ability to move. Your brain becomes trained like any other muscle, as an example, and eventually you don't need the stimulus any longer. So typically, if you're going to take an average in respect to taping for uh, to change a movement pattern, typically it takes three to four weeks to change a movement pattern. So I usually would recommend to keep it on for that period of time, a three to five day period of taping, keep it off for a couple of days, allow the skin to breathe, reapply it, and, and, and repeat that process for three to four weeks, and then assess how your body has accomplished the, uh, the task without the tape on. Awesome. Wow, that's really cool. So, so ultimately, you don't have to be wearing it forever, but there's, there's the reteaching the body how to move, and I think that just the use of kinesio tape and rock tape for, for reteaching the body how to move, but it's so important not to just to reteach the body how to move, but to prevent injuries yeah. um, and also recover. It sounds like you rehabilitate from injuries and ultimately help in peak performance, achieve peak levels of performance. When I say peak performance, I'm not talking about Olympic athletes. Sure, yeah, Olympic athletes, but I'm talking about the stay-at-home mom who just wants yeah. to be fit and feel optimal in her body. Right. I, I, lo I love that term. So I hope I didn't bring across that, you know, we're only applying this to the Olympic athletes. I love the fact that our, my general weekend warrior gets to take advantage of the same tools that our Olympians are using currently for performance enhancement, that this tape can be applied easily and effectively to, to anyone at any level to be able to optimize how we move. This is our ultimate goal is to move more efficiently, right? And, mm -hmm. and if we can simply use a simple piece of tape uh, on, in a specific area of the body to help us breathe more efficiently, to improve our stride length, um, uh, in, to, to mitigate fatigue and, and the ramifications of fatigue, uh, I think it's a great tool. I know it's a great tool because I've been using it for 10 years with some great success and, uh, and I'm going to continue to learn more and apply you know, more um, tools into my toolbox. Yeah, that's awesome. And it's been so wonderful having you here and I want to sort of give a little, even though we just said it's not just for pro athletes and everything, but Steve, you've been working with some really some professional teams. You just came back. I'm going to let you just say a couple of the, the teams that you've worked with, but you just came back from Texas, right? I did. <laughs> I just got back yesterday. Um, let me just kind of show off my, and so I, I'm a, I'm a big swag kind of guy. And so they just give, you know, give me a hat and I'm happy. Um, so I, 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 I made a trip to, um, Houston, Texas yesterday to train the, um, the Houston Texans, uh, NFL football training staff of how to apply tape. Now, this may not seem like much, but it's a big deal when you're when you're tapping into a community that it's only been using rigid taping, strapping mm. taping, for the majority of, of of the life of the NFL. For them to call us and say, we want to learn more about elastic therapeutic tape. We want to know more about how rock tape can help facilitate um, pain mitigation inflammation control, fatigue, and, and better yet, performance. So that was exciting, and I always take advantage of those of those opportunities. Mm -hmm. um, 
So the NFL has been a, a, a big partner of ours for some time, the NHL and the NBA. So those have been some great experiences in the last four or five years. Yeah, congratulations on that. And I'm sure um, many of our viewers, whether you're watching live or maybe in replay, have seen professional athletes and in the Olympics, athletes wearing this weird tape on their yeah. body. And uh, it's not all of it has been rock tape, but much of it has been rock tape <laughs> that you're seeing those athletes right. wear. And so, so yeah. So, Steve, thank you so much for taking the time this morning to come on to be a guest expert, be a part of the Breathe, Run, Breathe community and a part of this program as a guest expert. I believe that what you're doing uh, is a quantum leap in in this whole realm of taping and achieving peak levels of health and well-being. I'm not even going to use performance, just levels of health and well-being. Um, so it's really, really exciting stuff for those people who are in the Breathe, Run, Breathe community. You're going to have this video archived in there, but we're also hopefully going to be giving you some additional um, resources and tools to for taping specifically for breathing. So, um, and maybe if we're lucky enough, we'll have Steve come back on again and give us some more taping, specific taping demos. We'll see. <laughs> Absolutely. Anytime. <laughs> Great. Well, thank you so much, Steve, for taking the time this morning. It was wonderful having you here. I want to give you a plug again, Rock Tape. It's rocktape.com, right? That's right. Simple as enough. All right. Go ahead. Check out rocktape.com and if you're interested if you're not a, already a member of the breathe run breathe community you can also check out breathe check out breathe run breathe at breathe run breathe.com thank you so much everyone and we will see you next time thanks lisa <laughs>